hey this is matt once again welcome back to another video of the paid request this time from james thank you so much for that and for those interested requesting any type of videos feel free to send it either directly to my paypal or join my patreon both links are down below in the info box well then there or there wherever the info box is it could be for pretty much any type of video commentary review reaction video game try let's play one hour try whatever the case re-review but this is for a fan film called The Legend of Zelda, The Hero of Time, which is loosely based on the Ocarina of Time video game. And if you follow my channel, you know my thoughts on that game. I won't get into this. <laughs> but it's hard to judge a fan film because it's a fan film. I mean... Obviously, they're not professionals. Obviously, they didn't have a lot of money. This was... I think it started maybe 2005 they started doing this, but it got done 2009 or 2000... somewhere around there. Sorry, I did a drink. I remember reading up that apparently it took like five years on and off. For some reason, I keep thinking it was like 2005, 2006. I think 2005. And you can find it for free on YouTube. Again, it's hard to be harsh on a fan film. But I'm going to be. <laughs> If you're a hardcore Zelda fan and you loved it because it references your favorite game and you like the gun who added to that they did something for Peanuts, I can understand. I really can. But as a film, just for entertainment purposes, I would rather watch that Mad Max one I saw and I reviewed Hope and Glory. Something like Kun Fury. What was oh my god I can't believe I forgot the the name of it, the Friday the Thirteenth one Never Hiked Alone. I may not like the person who made it, for a lot you know reasons I won't get into, but did I like the film? Yes. Even Never Hiked Alone, the not the second one but the third one I didn't mind it. I had issues but I didn't mind it and I would put that above this. And there's other fan films as well. It's just one of those things that, number one, because I'm not a big Zelda guy, you just say, well, this isn't made for you. You're probably, you're right. You're right. I do like Link to the Past, that video game. I do like that for Super Nintendo. But it's one of those things where a lot of the direction they do this ugly awful looking thing where it's like clear as cell vaseline that's what it looks like it's on the camera all the time the ugly filters if it's not filters i don't know what they used where everything just looks it looked like i was watching the film without my glasses it did like, if I take my glasses off and I look at, you know, reality, where, you know, I can see things, get, you know, I'm, what's it called, nearsighted. I think that means, so that means, like, far away, it's fuzzy. So, like, if it's right here, I can see, like, the words, I can see perfectly fine here, but if it's far away, it gets fuzzy. I might mess that up. Anyway. That's what it looks like watching the film. And there would be like these light streaks. Throughout the film. Where it's like I'm trying to watch it. But I see these like light streaks. Especially vertical. And a lot of times like the camera. Is like trying to have these angles. Or is trying to keep moving. As if we don't stop moving. People get bored. And. This was an hour and 48 minutes long. It's really a, it's a really tough sell for 
to have an hour and 40 minute fan film. It's a very tough sell. Now, before I go further, the story of it is, I said loosely based on Ocarina of Time, and because at the beginning here, there's this woman in the woods with a baby, and she's being chased, and at times it was hard to see. I'm like, why is it so damn like fuzzy or like light streaks throughout everything? The baby's given to someone else. We couldn't find out that that's Link as a baby. And I believe, like, Ocarina of Time, the girl you talk to in your village, that if you go through, I believe, the, the Lost Woods, you find her and she gives you the, the song. That's no longer your, perhaps, you know, your friend, maybe girlfriend, potential, whatever the case, childhood friend. That's now your mother. That's Link's mother. Which I know is not technically his mom, because again, he was pretty much given up for adoption. But it's still weird to have a lady keep saying that I'm your mother, this and that, when you both look like the, you're the same age. <clears throat> and the guy who played Link, I think it's the director? Forgive me if I'm wrong. And for a second, I'm like, his name's David Blaine? What, the magician? <laughs> no, but... I actually, honestly, forgot what the hell his name was. Maybe it, maybe it is. Is it? Hero of Time. And I should have this up, so I apologize. I'll just put fan film. They'll make it easier. I was not really big on this guy. I did it's uh, hard. It is okay. The the Joel Moosh, sorry, he made it. Now I don't know who he played. It's a four point five on IMDb, so I guess I'm not the only one who was really big on this. So, Joel Mooch, he directed it, and he's in the film, but in a lesser role. The star is one of the writers of the film, David Blaine. Again, not the magician. He plays Link, and... He just seemed a bit too old... When people kept telling him, like, oh, this boy here, this young person. I'm like, this guy looks like he's 27 years old. He's going to get some Brewsties for his bros. Hey, bro, where's the Brewstie, bro? And he looks like he's ready to, I don't know, pump some babies into some babes at frat parties before the last night before graduation and then going off to work for his dad at some surf shop. I don't know. It just I I don't know if this is the right guy for Link. And unlike the game, Link here does talk a lot because the easiest way to shoot something and the cheapest thing to shoot is dialogue. So there's a lot of dialogue scenes, a lot of scenes where people talking and talking and talking. And I tell you, it got really boring really damn quick. Especially for something that's an hour and 40 minutes, it got boring really damn quick. And the fact that it was an awful looking movie, I, I, didn't, I know it's a fan film. But hell, there was that Spider-Man fan film I reviewed that was from the 90s. God, I forgot what the hell, like, what was that called? The Green Goblin's Last Stand. That, to me, is a good fan film. I thought the guy who played Spider-Man, yeah, she, who's the guy who made it, he was actually pretty good for a fan film. And it was only four. 45 or so minutes long, give or take. 
and there's some good stunt work and the ending where he's fighting the green goblin and it's like brutal and they had the camera work was handled in a reasonable fashion like that's how you do a fan film the green goblin's last stand and that's the thing is why even though i don't i shouldn't be harsh on a fan film i am because if I just give this a pass, that's an insult to something like the Green Goblin's Last Stand that is, I thought, actually pretty good. While this, I appreciate the effort. Hell, I've never made a film. What the hell do I know? I guarantee, of course, it's a tough thing to do. And, you know, they took years and I'm glad. Hey, congrats on completing it. <clears throat> I just don't like it and I just thought it sucked. <laughs> And it is weird, I was getting, what I was uh, saying about him, how old Link is, he looks, when you have dialogue saying, he's only a child, or, goodbye my baby boy, I'm like, you look the same age as him, and this guy, again, looks like he's 27 years old, going to bang some broads after getting some brewsties. He's only a child, like, come on. The reason that line comes up is because... Like Ocarina of Time, the great Deku Tree is asking for an audience. Now granted, you don't go into the tree and have this fight scene. No, it just, it talks. But, of course, there's no budget really for much of any effect, so you don't really see much of the tree doing anything. There might have been an effect where maybe there's like a bit of dart here and here to kind of be eyes. But you have this voice that Kind of, kind of sounds like a guy trying to do his Michael Clark Duncan impersonation. And Michael Clark Duncan from the Green Mile and Ben Affleck's Daredevil film. Rest in peace to him. But it sounded like someone doing an impression of him. It pretty much saying, I speak of your dreams and there's a great evil and you need to be the hero and... Tit some ass, take some names. He doesn't say that, but this primer's the gist. So again, his, you know, adoptive, you know, not, not actual mother, but his mother says, oh, he's only a child. Goodbye, my baby boy. Good luck on your journey. He goes into town. You know, they, there's little elements that they mention that, that's reminiscent of the game. He buys a bow, and then this guy, the shopkeeper, just decides to go, do 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 do, you know, do 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 do. Like he sells the bow, and he's trying to talk like he's the micro machines guy, da, 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 and gives him a bow, and then I guess to celebrate, I'm like, okay, you have to have this guy somehow celebrate each time he sells something, in order to get that chime when you actually get an item. It's one of those things that, of course, you you only have so much for a budget, but it's one of those weird things where you're making a Zelda movie, even a fan film, you will feature a scene where Link gets knocked out by a frying pan, but you don't mention you don't show one scene where he has like a chest and you open up a chest. And maybe have the score go doo -doo -doo -doo. like you he doesn't have to go like this, but it's like, you know, he's looking at it, and, like, you don't have him open up a chest or two, but you have this, and there's that one bit where he goes to a dungeon, which I think is kind of weird, because, again, you're, you're referencing Ocarina of Time, and for what it seems like, this second part of the game is just going to, like, dungeon after dungeon after dungeon, but there's no dungeons, you don't go into any dungeons. I'm like, couldn't it be like a warehouse where you, I don't know, you go into a room and you set dress it and you fight whatever, then you go to another room, but it's the same room, you just redress the same set. I don't know, I just... What they try to do with the, the budget is, what, what little they had is, 
I guess by hiding with all those ugly, fuzzy, clear as hell filters, as I, oh, well, there's Link, and there's this castle area. And then later on, he finally starts fighting some monsters, some really bad-looking monsters. Like this dragon that I appreciate the ambition, but it looks like worse than sci-fi channel stuff where this dragon that it is really really cheap looking this is not good at all uh, I'm sorry I'm sure it took like three people with eight bucks and some chewing gum I, I could pre but hell if that's the case I would prefer just a puppetry like a puppet dragon or something or with uh, that charm at least for me because CGI just doesn't have any charm to me, cheap or not. A cheap puppet, cheap pa practical effect would have a charm to me. But that's only me personally. But before we get to that, he did see the castle high rule after getting hit by a, f a frying pan from someone and he wakes up. More and more dialogue, he meets Zelda. Where they meet for like a minute and then they almost kiss. And I'm sitting there going... Really? After almost a minute? Damn. She is slut. I do like the bit where a guy comes in, he's been wounded with an arrow. He's supposed to be talking, but you see his mouth is not moving. And you can clearly hear, hear that this guy's been dubbed in. Now, why that had to be the case, and he couldn't just say this dialogue on set? I guess there must be a story. I don't know what. Maybe they shot it, and they said afterward, well, let's have, give him, have him some dialogue. And his mouth is kind of hidden, but kind of hidden like this, where you can still see his mouth, and you can tell he's not talking. <laughs> And then it, it kind of seems like he just jumps to this place after some dialogue, and he has the ocarina now. He plays do 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 do, goes in, and there's the master sword. And he gets it, and Danon is it, ha ha, you fuck you asshole. And then he's stuck there for five years, and then he comes out, and the world's gone to hell in the handbasket. And that's the thing, it's like Link hasn't done anything. Up to this boy. What has he done? Like even in the game. Ocarina of Time. You. Actually did some stuff. Before you got the master, master sword. You did fight some monsters. And you had to get those. Three things. And fight bosses. In order to. Get to the master sword. <coughs> It's like he hasn't done anything to prove to people that he's the hero and this master sword. He hasn't done anything to prove anything. It's clear the audience. He hasn't done Jad Squad. And of course, five years passed, but he hasn't grown at all because he would need a different actor. Which made me go, I'm surprised they didn't just get, well, I guess, because it's a little, it's a fan film, they couldn't get a kid, because if you get a kid, and then you're something like this, where it took, you know, five years or whatever to finish, <laughs> that kid ain't going to be a kid anymore. So it comes out, Ganon is taking over. The guy playing Ganon, the way he's dressed, the costumes, the way he acts, Seems like he would fit in a Power Rangers show. Take that how you will, good or bad. One positive I will say is the music. I think whoever comp whoever composed the music, uh, they were the, the best asset to this fan film. The music is reminiscent of the games, but at the same time being its own thing. They do have musical moments that remind you of the, the game. It makes it feel bigger than it is. So yeah, whoever did work on the, the music. 
I don't know if I can find... See if I can find his name on here, because he does deserve some recognition. So bear with me on that. Uh, and of course, I mean, there's going to be some fans that, that liked it just because of... It's Zelda, and it's, and, you know, something was made. But, like, the second half, they do try to put a little bit more action into it. Like as, soon he get, as soon as he gets out, there's a woman being attacked, and Link kills a couple people. <laughs> Which I don't know if the game... So, well, I, yeah, he does, but... That, uh... Baby go at least finally something's happening. We're only like halfway through the film. But he kills two of them and one he throws a log like uh, that's on fire and it sticks to the guy. Or as much as they could do editing wise. He finds a woman with a veil on. That's what her name is Sheik, but you clearly tell it's Zelda because it doesn't cover much of her face, and the part it does cover, we can see through it. So, like, you can see it's the same actress who's Zelda. Because we know it's been five years, and that girl, it, it, like, it's this, but it's mesh, so you can see through and still see her face. So, if they, I don't know why Link was so stupid he didn't realize it. And also, in that scene, in the background, it sounds like there's woodpeckers. Like, like, in the back, you hear, like, when Link is talking to the sh sheiky baby, sheik lady, and you just, like, stop the damn hammering. How would you get these antlers on? Do you, you use staples? So I think a different movie. But it just... It got a little irritating with that noise. I'm like, what the hell is that noise? I had to pause and go, is that around here? No? Oh, that's the, the movie. Okay. I didn't know what the hell was going on. So Link is on a journey. He meets this Asian guy. And I guess he's... In the creature, like in Ocarina of Time, you meet the Gorons, the, the mountain creatures. So the mountain, so the race of mountain creatures have become one Asian guy. Okay? Who slowly helps him up a mountain. Or climb a little bit and edit the stuff together. I also thought it was funny how Link was a dick because they get to a piece of, they get to a wall and there's a marking and I guess you need like blood to open it. Now I don't know if it's Goron blood but he, he didn't really have a conversation or asked. He just took the guy, slid his hand and put the blood on there. He's like, ah, oh, what are you doing? I mean, well, he's being a dick. You cut someone's hand, make them bleed, and put it on there, you dick. You should throw Link's ass off the damn mountain for that. And that's where you finally get into these action scenes with creatures. Again, very, very, very low-budget CG dragon. That's supposed to be in this volcano bit where, again, the, it's like they know the effects are bad, so that's why I just they had all these filters that just I did made it look ugly. And then Link doesn't really kill it. It's just kind of he he dodges, he hides, he runs away into this area. Kind of like Luke Skywalker Return of the Jedi. Where Luke ran and the creature's trying to get in. But at least Luke did something and made the thing crush it. Here Link kind of doesn't do anything. He kind of just turns around. And by the creature, the dragon tried to get in, the rocks just fall and land on him, and it's pretty much dead. And Link's like, well, I gotta do something. 
and then stabs it. Greg, Greg you stab the dead creature. Congrats. And then, like, you did this awkward montage that seems like, okay, it's almost as if, listen, this is a movie. If this was done later in the production, I would not be surprised, as in, we'd have this stuff, just rush it, rush it, just do it, do it, do it, okay, there's no flow to it, it's just all of a sudden they're in this area, and it's a graveyard, and there's a skull, I guess supposed to be a bubble, then they're over this area with Link and Sheety Baby, her, they find this octopus, I guess one of those octo things from the Zelda games. Then there's this giant pig man that they fight. I, but fight as in it's there. Then I swear to God, the next shot, it's on the ground. I don't know how it got from standing to on the ground, but it did. And then Link stabs it. And I'm like, it was right there standing. How The next bit, now he's on the ground. How the hell did that happen? Just this really awkward, badly done, bad effect Latin uh, mon you know, montage. Until finally, you know, Zelda, she, she's getting taken. Link has to do a bit of sword fighting. You know, not too bad sword fighting for a fan film. Granted, it's very heavily edited in terms of like going, ba 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 ba, but I just the uh, high that you know they're not professionals and, but the same thing like certain moves here and there and then he fights Ganon, uh, that's probably I guess the the best scene in the movie. Does it make it a lengthy enough sword fight? Granted, again, it's a lot of like edit, then edit over here, then edit, then edit angle. Put it over here, now put it over here, like really going back and forth. So it's not like a easy going flow where you really know is the choreography. But it wasn't a bad sword fight for what it is. Also, earlier when Link was fighting these soldiers, he does this thing where he punches the ground and there's this explosion. Maybe that's in the game, but I, I just don't remember, don't know what that was. So, and in spoilers, he kills Ganon. You think that'd be the end of the, the movie. Instead, there's like another two minute action scene where he's like finding these random soldiers. He's getting slashed up, but he kills them. He's heavily wounded. Zelda grabs him. Put the sword back, the master sword. Which I guess also transports him back the five years before. And his injuries also healed. Which I think is like, wait a minute, so. He doesn't age if he goes forward five years, but if he goes back five years. That would mean like his body doesn't change at all. But if he goes backward five years, then all his injuries are healed. And it's, I mean, it's five years, but he still looks the same. I, I did, so it's almost like I guess maybe a time machine instantaneously of course I don't know it's a Zelda why am I putting logic into it it is what it is and it's one of those like I think the camera work was very bad just a lot of times going all over the place as if to invoke excitement. Uh, the look, the cinematography, the look of it was god awful. I, that was my what I hated the most was the way it looked. It was ugly to look at. The effects are very shoddy and cheap. There's not really any prop like this type of fan film. It would be much more appetizing to the viewer to have like creatures in suits. Okay, they're not going to be Jim Henson work. 
or Stan Winston work, of course, but yeah, they're, they're going to be cheap, but you know, it, it would have a bit of a charm to it. And it doesn't do that at all. And the first half, there's a severe lack of action. The second half is like, okay, now we're going to put all the action in the second half, but other than the Danon fight, the other stuff isn't really that much to run home about. The music is really good. The acting, not so good. I know it's a fan film. I get it. But, again, the reason I'm downing on it is just that I've seen other fan films. I didn't like that Spider-Man one I mentioned. The Green Goblin's Last Stand. That new... We have like $400 or whatever. And that even that had a green goblin mask that looked pretty damn good. I would say it looked better than the Sam Raimi Power Ranger green goblin thing. And so that's really... Uh, I like that. But anyway, that's just my opinion. With that said, thanks for watching. Take care, everyone, and uh, we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye for now.